All right, welcome to Table Cleaning with the Single Malt Review. The secrets finally about to be revealed of our filthy, filthy cat hair table. It's masking tape. So good for cleaning. Whether it has to be spotless, whether it has to be fast, whether the sergeant is coming down the hallway immediately, masking tape. It'll do it. Also, a sneak look at the uh, Single Malt Review set. Show them the top of the cabinet there, Dave. Show them the mysteries. The mysteries at the top. Look at all that garbage up there that you can't see. It's amazing. Each one of those bottles has a story, I will bet. Alright, that's enough of that nonsense. Let's get in with the episode, I suppose. Hello, and welcome back once again to the Single Malt Review. And also welcoming back Mingus. Um, Possibly a poor choice to put a white cat on my newly clean table, but hey, uh, it's got to start. Mmm, some of them are Okay, so, what are we going to have a look at today? We're going to smash straight into our session this weekend with something from Douglas Lang. Mm. It is the Epicurean, and it is a, and this is increasingly uncommon, a blended malt. Blended lowland malt at that. So, um... You see what you can sort of derive from the bottle. So there, we have a cask strength all malt whiskey. It's excellent. Okay, special recipe created by our local bartenders. Mm. So you're explaining the Oh Mingus, no. Mingus, no. <laughs> oh carry on though. Yes. The Epicurean. They are a boutique bar, whiskey bar perhaps. They are bar. some some yes. renown in in Glasgow. Uh -huh. Oh could grief, Mingus. Alright, no. Pop. Let's try it again. So, the Epicurean, oh. a somewhat renowned Glasgow pub. Yes, indeed. And uh, they have, I suppose, put together this blend, which is not normally mm. a single cask um, outing. It's normally a 46% uh, ABV blend, but uh, just like this one, not chill filtered or coloured. Mm. So it's a pretty good, um, pretty good yeah. craft um, trimmings, trimmings either way. Uh, this one, though, if you've got the choice, I'd say definitely the one to go for, because mm. it is a, what have we got? It's a smashing 58.6, so cast yeah. strength indeed. Mm. And, um, yeah, I, I took a sort of a punt on this one, because it was curiously, curiously affordable over at our whiskey local, and um, I was not even remotely disappointed, I mm. think. See if you agree, but I think this has a lot of... Sure. The bang for buck factor here is yeah. enormous. It's a high ABV, uh, very limited run of 3,000 models, so you know, not a huge amount, but still should be readily available if you're looking for it. Whoop. So you can see here, uncoloured, yeah. and yeah. very much, as I call it, the colour of honesty there. Mm. Nothing too outrageous. It's impressively pale for a whiskey of this drink, so mm. getting some refill bourbon perhaps, or just... I think you know, very, very predominantly too. refill bourbon. Mm. Uh, if there is any sherry in there, it's very... Very laid back. Yeah. Um, I think probably probably isn't there at all, mm. given the uh, taste profile yeah. as well. Exclusively lowland malts. Yeah, that's a funny old choice there. Yeah. I suppose if you're from Glasgow, then that's the sort of that's uh, mm. malts close to hand. And if you want to taste the flavour of the region, then this yes. is probably a good way to do it. So, so yeah, lowland lowland distilleries. Uh, there are a lot more than there used to be a few years ago. There's been uh, a few that have just started up and are now even producing. Whiskey uh, this was a daft mill release for um, quite a lot of money earlier this year. But there is very, very unlikely to be any daft mill or any other curly old ones in here. So we'll be looking at the three main ones, the big sort of ones that have been producing for a wee while. And they are, respectively, Ockintoshin, which is probably the most well-known, uh, Glen Kinchy, and... Blade Blade Knock. Knock, which is the least known, especially mm. if you're me. I use whiskey that I forget exists sometimes, but uh, it has sort of rebranded recently and is a bit more visible, I suppose. So, yeah, haven't tried any of the new uh, sort of bottlings, but I hear they're perfectly, perfectly good. So, speaking of perfectly good, let's have a wee look in here. Ooh. There is a lot of old-fashioned lemonade. Yeah. And there's some lemon drop sweets. It's light mm. and it's very sort of heather honey and yeah. it is, as you say, pretty citrusy mm. as well. But it's also quite buttery. There's a bit of buttery yes, short. There's a bit of a pastry edge to it. 
and there is a lot of really really subtle florals and that's what I really like about the lowland whiskey mm. there's nice grassiness to it's that is just, yeah uh, it's just present not there's a there's a abundant. herbal and floral quality to mm. lowland malt which really you can only get in really only bourbon and really only refill bourbon at that because oh. it's spirit derived it's driven by the spirit and it is very very subtle so it's There's, so easily drowned out by cask influence yeah those lovely sort of buttercup buttery floral notes go and have a wee sniff of a if you're in the uk you call them wind bushes we call them gorse bushes over mm -hmm. here they have these huge sprays of bright yellow flowers and you have to get right up in there mm -hmm. right up in the um right up in the grill to smell it, but there is a particular scent there, which is the scent of lowland whiskey to me, those windbush flowers, and it's very, very present here. Yeah. For me, it is the scent of hay fever in springtime. Oh, of course, no. it's an ecological menace in this country, but in its homeland, it is a natural part of the landscape and you know, a fine well, feature. Thank, thank goodness mm. it is not, um, it doesn't communicate Still allergies in the, the same of way of winter here. here in New Zealand as we feel. Mm. So, on the palate, mm. full strength. Oh, that is, oh, very fumey. That is big and spiritous. There's a lot of young spirit in there. It hits oh. you pretty hard. Yeah, it's, it's um, going to come with a territory for strength. It is do that, but. fairly sharp. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't think car strength is the way to go no, with okay. this one. As, yeah, because it's pretty, it's pretty savage. This is, I haven't really speculated on age. Um, this is obviously no age statement whiskey, and it's not going to be old whiskey. Not for the price I paid. Mm. Um, I think we're dealing with probably six to ten year old mm. whiskies in here, and that kind of that works out with the um, ABV fifty eight point six. We'll assume that started out at about sixty three, as they typically do. Um, that is yeah, that's that's around around ten years worth of a drop. Um, there may be some older whiskey in there. There may be a bit of twelve just to round things off. But we are dealing with a pretty Pretty youthful dram here. So the inside of my glass yeah. is now thoroughly coated in oils. It won't show up on camera, but it's a good mm. film clinging to that. So I won't I won't persevere um, with anti exercise. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit of water because I think that's really the way to oh. go with this one. That has filed a lot of the sweetness off the nose. There's a lot of the more um, danker, older fruity notes. Yeah, and a, a lot more must. a lot more spirit. As well, that's it's almost like it's gone back in time a wee bit to an even younger style of whiskey. Really lively, springy spirit character in here now. <sighs> Ooh, wow, that has excuse me transformed the palate a lot. The citrus is still there, but it's very much a plain second fiddle to these. Oh, peaches, apricots. Yeah, Stew lots of fruit, um, tinned fruit, fleshy white yeah. fruits. But specifically. not especially sweet though. It's been those flavors, but dried out mm. substantially. It's a whiskey with water. You could describe, and you can't describe any this way. You could describe it as crisp. It's a refreshing yeah. Scotch whiskey, it's and a Granny Smith crunch to it. Typically, Scotch doesn't. It's not really a refreshing drink. Very few spirits are. Gin is the archetype there. Gin is a refreshing drink that is still a spirit. Uh, whiskies typically no, they're more of a you know, they're a, they're a, they're a comfort drink, they're a warm mm. drink. But crisp, hardly ever. This one definitely crisp. Imagine biting into a big green apple kind of a thing. It's that kind of crispness. And adding the water has quickened that flavour hugely. It was more of a there was nice sort of candle wax almost before. It was a much slower moving palate that we could derive from it anyway. It was still pretty raw, but now it's a it's a real rushing river of flavour now. Have you tried the um, standard bottle strength 46% mm. version of the Epicurean? No, I have not. Oh. So um, I can't make any direct comparisons as to whether they have picked out slightly different whiskies for this one or whether this is exactly what it says. It's just the 46% minus the water. Um, that's probably the simplest explanation. So mm. we'll assume that we've pretty much just recreated the 46%. Yeah. Um, version by adding our own bit of water here and okay. so with that stipulation we'll say 46 percent versions not fooling around mm. either i added just another small splash of water there and that has brought out a big 
uh, thread of crystallized ginger, mm. and it's brought back some lemon as well. Those lemon drops are back on the palate. And a wee bit more. Mm. It's just a non-stop whiskey journey. Yeah. It is, it is kind of eye-opening to see this much diversity and this much intensity of flavor from nothing but Lowland whiskey. Yeah. Um, not that not that Lowland whiskey can't throw out a few real, you know, humdingers mm. once in a while. It does, but typically it doesn't. Typically it's much more, it's just a bit restrained, too restrained for its own good. And there's not a lot. It's so actually consistently uh, delicate, gentle, easygoing style. Mm. Um, as for the, the sort of the breakdown here, um, I reckon this is probably mostly young Ockentoshan by the sort of the taste of it. I may be completely wrong. Uh, Glen Kinchy presents a bit more of a, well, it's a bit of a richer, darker flavour, so I don't think there's as much going on in here. And Bladnock, Bladnock is not so easy to get a hold of, so um, I'm sure there's a portion of it in here to add some balance, but I wouldn't know how much. If they had a good um, good line on it to bring it in, then maybe there's more than I think. But yeah, I think this is this is largely an exercise in young Alcantoshan. That would be my bet. So that would mean that uh, the majority of this has probably been triple distilled as well, as is their practice over there. But, but, what you really come here for is the number, mm. the crucial element here, and it's going to be a pretty good one for me. I yeah. think this is a super, super solid dram. It's an 89 for me. Mm. What do you think? I'm not far behind. This rate's an 88 for me. Yeah. It's a great to have a um, cast strength expression which encapsulates all the quintessential lowland characters it's not something outlandishly unique and quirky it's just a good showcase of the style yeah that's really good to see and a real rise in quality mm. in the douglas lang's blended malts yeah. range because i had a few of those in the earlier days um sort of immediately following the split we got oh there was one called highland journey had a picture of a train on the bottle or something <laughs> and it was the most tired can't be bothered boring bottle of whiskey imaginable you actually would have taken work and science to make something that uninteresting out of highland whiskey which typically is a little bit more going on um but no they, they made it work and there was similarly sort of crummy ones there was a timorous beastie which was a uh, uh, you know robbie burns adjacent kind of a thing not good either bad bad boring whiskey not old enough not interesting enough nothing this total turnaround this could not be mm could not be um, really, I think, any better than what they put together. So um, bravo to that. And uh, I hope you also enjoyed that one back home. This was our uh, first one of the session this weekend. So, you know, creaking the bones back yeah, into life. It's been a couple of months since our last filming outing, despite our regular content. We only do this periodically, so it's good mm, to be back. Yes, indeed. At it trusty is, table. It is good to be back. Mm. So, um, with that one, we will get loose, and then we will cut loose with mm -hmm. some more whiskies coming up. Stick around for that one. Slanger, we'll be right back.